Hi, it's Dwyer. It's August 21st, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk 154 pounds. Sebastian Fundora against challenger Errol Spence. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Right now, let's talk about a fight that is so early that it's not listed on most betting sites. Right? It's that early. Whether the fight actually happens is uncertain. According to reports, it might happen in October. I would question even that. But understand, it has a casino mispricing, and that's what my channel, hopefully, is about here on YouTube. Let's talk about the two guys. Let me also say two, and I say this with the utmost of seriousness. One of the things I love about this time of year, we'll call them the dog days of summer, is that everyone's distracted. Right? People are on the beach, people have been on the beach for weeks, or people are in some vacation spot, or they're on some cruise someplace, and they've completely lost it. But betting spreads are out of whack. This is different than, let's say, late February, when everyone's gearing up for March Madness, when people actually start taking the NBA seriously. When even the load management guys, if their teams need the games, will play in the NBA. Right? In August, it's a different vibe. People think everything's ahead of them. Right? The NFL season, that hasn't started yet. Forget the fact that now is the time to bet on the NFL. Right? Now is the time to get these over-unders on win totals. Now's the time to get betting futures when no one seems to realize that Bo Nix can play, right? Outside of people who followed Pac-12, let's remember them, football, right? Now's the time to actually be active. Well, in boxing, folks, I've seen a bunch of ridiculous lines. I have a couple of videos up already for premium subscribers. Let's talk about a line I consider to be absolutely ridiculous right it's it's simply absurd maybe the lines absurd because this event hasn't actually posted in most places but what I want people to do is to recognize that at 154 pounds you have a champion who is taller he's six five and a half let me repeat that. He's six, five and a half. He's taller than Alexander Usyk. Right? Understand, this champ, Southpaw, has beaten major Southpaws. He beat Erickson Lubin. Right? Disfigured Lubin's face. Understand, he's had other big fights. Folks, he, whatever you think of the scoring, he went the distance with Tim Zhu. In other words, this is not a guy operating on the fringe of 154. No, he's fighting real fighters. He lost to Brian Mendoza, got knocked out. Just understand that he's dominating Mendoza before he gets hit with the KO shot. He has one of the best nicknames in boxing. You need to know the nickname. He is the Towering Inferno. Understand, somehow Vegas, or at least OddsChecker.com, has made Sebastian Fundora the underdog in this fight. Right? This is a guy with not just experience at 154, he has real experience. He's beaten a lot of guys with big records. Let me ask a dumb question here. If you're preparing for this fight at 154 pounds, 
how do you find a sparring partner who can fight like Sebastian Fondora? Right, Fondora is not only tall, folks, he's in the pocket and he's high volume. This is not the tall guy trying to use length, right, the way I would if I were six, five and a half, right, trying to lean back, trying to make you miss, trying to hit you when you can't hit him because you don't have the reach. This isn't him. This is the tall guy who's in the pocket with you. And he's throwing more punches than you. In other words, to take his title, you're going to have to do something, like Brian Mendoza did. Right? You're going to have to hurt him badly. Understand, Erickson Lubin couldn't do that. And Lubin is one of the sport's premier body punchers. Right? There is nothing, folks. I don't want to sound too hard here, but there is nothing Errol Spence is going to throw at Fundora's body that Erickson Lubin didn't throw at Fundora's body in a fight that was a shootout. It was competitive. But understand, it's Fundora who won that fight. Now let's talk about Errol Spence. Right? Before I say a word, I want people to understand, <laughs> and this is an August betting line, I want people to understand that somehow Sebastian Fundora, who's only lost once, right, folks, he's only lost once. That's a fight he's dominating. Get stopped in. Fundora is going off at a plus 175 right now. Who made that line? Is the public confused on this one? Well, let's talk about Errol Spence. Folks, Errol Spence is 34 years old. Now, I understand. Some fighters seem to turn back time. Crawford's older than that. Right? But you need to separate out outliers from guys who have lived tough lives who might be slowing down. Spence, 34. Right? Fundora, 8 years younger, 26. If I asked you the question of who's in their prime, what would your answer be? The champ at 154 pounds? The fighter between these two who actually has experience at 154 pounds? Or Errol Spence? Spence is coming off his first loss. Folks, I'm telling you, that's a major moment for a fighter. It was a major moment for Fundora when he was coming off his first loss and had to fight Tim Zhu. Right? A lot of these fighters feel that they are paradigm shifts. They're going to be on the Mount Rushmore of boxing. Then they lose that first fight, and then they're questioning everything. They can no longer be Andre Ward, Joe Calzaghe, Floyd Mayweather, Rocky Marciano. Right? They have a loss on their record. This is a big question for Tyson Fury right now. Does the sport mean as much to you when you have a loss as when you didn't have a loss? I remember, saw an interview. It was one of the major interviews I've seen watching boxing. Lennox Lewis had just lost his first loss. And I remember Lewis in the interview looking relieved. It was a bit of a stutter. And Lewis, who of course beat everyone who beat him. Right? That's a rarity in boxing. Lewis said, you know, before people used to view me as Superman. Maybe now they'll just view me as a man. That's what, that's what Lewis said, right? He just wanted the benefit of the doubt in fights. Well, let me just say this. Spence coming off his first loss, folks, it was a bad loss. Right? He got stopped. Understand, he hits the canvas early, gets up, continues to get battered. He's dominated by Terrence Crawford. Errol Spence has had eye surgery. 
right? I know in boxing, they always want you to believe that the surgery was routine and stuff like that. Folks, the eye surgery came after Errol Spence crashed his sports car. Right? This is the this is the guy who has had problems. Now he's never fought at 154 pounds. Are you sure that this 34-year-old's punch is going to be something? that Sebastian Fondora, who just fought Tim Zhu, hasn't seen. Are you sure that Errol Spence is going to be prepared for a guy who almost certainly is going to throw more volume than him? Right? Who, of course, is more singular than him in terms of being a six, five and a half guy at 154 pounds. Right again, Spence, Southpaw, Erickson Lubin was a Southpaw. It's not like Sebastian Frendor is going to look across the ring and think, wow, I don't know what to do with Southpaws, even though I myself am a Southpaw. Right, so let's just say the bet I like here, and it's early, we'll have to augment this video. But the first bet in this fight that I'm taking is the casino mispricing. You say to me, Sebastian Fundura, a guy who's already beaten Tim Zhu, a guy who's already beaten Erickson Lubin. You tell me I'm getting Sebastian Fundura at a plus 175, and I'll say, I'll take that bet. My next question is going to be, who's he fighting? Right, As long as it's in the weight class, as long as he isn't jumping up to fight Canelo, you know, some heavy-handed, heavier dude who's two weight classes up. Right? By the way, I hope Terrence Crawford is taking notes about this analogy. As long as Fundor is not jumping up two weight classes to fight a first ballot Hall of Famer. And we all know, well before he's eligible, because you have to retire before you're eligible, we know where Canelo is. He's first ballot. Right? Just to understand, as long as Fondor is in his weight class, he should not be a plus 175 to any man. Right? Any man. Much less a guy who hasn't fought at 154 pounds. Understand, to get this level of height in a sparring partner... Errol Spence would have to go get Lawrence Acoli, the Bridgerweight champion. Or some of these heavyweights. Right? Vianello. To come spar with him. Right? He's going to have a hard time. Very hard time. Finding a guy with the physical dimensions of Sebastian Fundora. What I want people to do, too, is to look at Erickson Lubin's face. Now, Lubin actually, believe it or not, is pretty good defensively. Look at his face after his fight with Sebastian Fundora. Let me tell you what might happen. Right? Somebody shows you a picture of Erickson Lubin's face after that fight. And you might be inclined to say at first, no, 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 I don't want this picture. This isn't Erickson Lubin. Show me the photo of Erickson Lubin, the guy at 154. And the person will have to explain to you, no, no, that, that is Erickson Lubin. His face got rearranged that much during that fight, folks. Lubin's barely recognizable. And I'm serious about this. He's barely recognizable after his fight with Sebastian Fundora. Let's also talk about the hedge part of this bet. And understand, this is extremely high risk because we're flying blind here. I haven't seen the odds that the casino has posted. But the hedge part of this play, you're already getting the champ at a plus 175. 
simply to win. In other words, if Fundora wins at any time, first round, by decision, you cash your ticket. You don't even care about the rest of the sentence. Let's say you missed the fight and you're reading some post-fight report. The minute they say Sebastian Fundora won, you go, yes, got this, win. You look at the ticket, you say, yes. Or you look at your website, you say, yes. More money in my account, more beer for me. Right? If the champ wins, you cash a plus 175, the hedge. And I think it's the only chance Errol Spence has of winning this fight. The hedge is Spence by stoppage, isn't it? Right? His only chance is a Brian Mendoza chance. Right? Lands the big body shot, chops down the tree, makes Fundora's height a detriment. Even though skilled inside fighter Erickson Lubin was unable to do it. Right? To me, that's Spence's only chance. Because, and I know this is controversial, especially this summer, now that we've had fights like Madrimov against Crawford, understand the champ going into the fight gets the advantage of any tie. It's the challenger who has to convince the judges that he has earned the title. Now when you're in with a champion who's actually throwing more punches than you, the only way you can really come back from that is if you knock him down in multiple rounds. Right? To come back against a champ who is throwing more punches than you. You're going to need 10-8, 10-7 rounds. Right, folks? Fundora is high volume. He's a tough champ to beat because he's high volume. Let's make another point too. I thought Spence looked masterful against Ugas. Right? No question about it. But Ugas is a counterpuncher, isn't he? How did Ugas beat Manny Pacquiao? Right? Pacquiao would jump in the pocket. Pacquiao can be a lead. Pacquiao would jump in the pocket and then Ugas, of course, would take a step back, sway, make Pacquiao miss his first shot and then have Pacquiao where he wants him as a counterpuncher, right in the pocket. Errol Spence looked magnificent. Errol Spence was able to smother Ugas. Look at the film of that fight. You're going to see that Errol Spence is leaning physically on Ugas's body at times in that fight. There's not an inch and a half of space between the two men at times in that fight. Not an inch and a half. Right? Spence is close to him. Spence is draped on him. Because Ugas is a counter. Now what happens if Spence is fighting a lead? Right, folks? Didn't Crawford keep Spence busy on Spence's way into the pocket? Crawford's not waiting to counter Spence. Crawford's hitting him with a jab. That's the key punch in that fight, right? Crawford comes out, Crawford's hitting him with the jab. Spence has a problem getting past the jab. Spence has a problem with Crawford's volume, doesn't he? Right, folks, here, you don't have a counter waiting for Spence to enter the pocket and then to try to hit Spence with shots, right? Spence, to his credit, he's a short puncher. But understand, He's going to have to go through a hailstorm to get close to Sebastian Fundora. Isn't that what happened to Erickson Lubin? You want to do research on how a Fundora Spence fight looks. My advice is to just pull out the tape of Fundora against uh, Lubin. Another Southpaw who likes to come in, who wants to be up close to, who wants to hit you in the body. Right, folks, look at how Fundora rain shots down on him. 
Understand, a tall guy like this, you're going to have to work with angles to even land counter shots. The illusion Fundora creates is that you look at him six, five, and a half. Right? This is Jordan level height. You look at him and you think, oh, there's so much body to hit here. I'm just going to come in low and I'm going to go to this guy's body. What could possibly go wrong? I'm telling you that boxing is flooded with guys like this. They create an illusion, right? Mayweather, you looked at him, you thought, oh, he's small. Oh, I should be able to just jump on this guy. Then, of course, as you try to throw a lot of punches on him, Mayweather's defense suddenly shows up. Then you start realizing that the best punch either of you has is Mayweather's left hook. That Mayweather's faster than you think. Right? I'm just telling you here, you have a different illusion. You have the big looking guy who looks like he needs a meal. Right? Six, five and a half, 154. You look at him and you say, oh, look, man, this guy's body's right there. I'm just going to come in, hook him to the body, uh, take away his rib cage. The towering inferno will be collapsing. Right? This will almost look like 9-11. Right? Folks, I'm telling you, that illusion works to Fundora's advantage. As you come inside, you start to realize, oh, wow, this guy's throwing a lot of shots. You start to realize, wow, this guy has a lot of pop. It's a bad visual, too. The tall guy landing more punches than the shorter guy during a round. You add in the fact that Fundora's the champ. And this plus 175 on the Fundora side of the play is a giveaway. Right, folks, this fight shouldn't even be even money. Fundora should be favored in this fight. Let's hope the public and let's hope the casinos never wise up. Let's hope the people who think that this spread is accurate stay on the beach. Continue to have my ties. Continue to ignore the difference in weight class. Right? One guy just lost at 147. Now he's going to be carrying extra weight at 154. <laughs> Good luck with that. Right? Good luck with that. Some fighters gain weight, handle it magnificently. Right? Akoli, who I mentioned, obviously Usyk. Right? Other guys, you'll be surprised. David Benavides jumped up to 175. Big Bad Benavides. The guy Tyson calls the Mexican monster. Right? We looked at Benavides and we thought, oh man, he just looked too strong for Demetrius Andre. He goes up to 175. He fights a guy who, truth be told, he privately sparred with, but he fights a guy who gets roughed up in the later rounds by Arthur Perturbiev. Right? That's Groves Dick. Well, here, Grovesick goes the distance against Benavides. You were watching that fight and you thought, wow, where's all that big power I saw Benavides with? Right now, maybe it's Grovesick who is better than advertised. I'll concede that. Maybe Benavides' punch isn't carrying to 175. Right, folks? There's an open question on whether Errol Spence's punch carries to 154. And in Spence's first fight at 154, we're to believe that he should be favored over the champion. Sorry, I'm not buying it. The bet I recommend here is Fundor at plus 175. If you get Spence by stoppage at let's say lower than a minus 175. In other words, if Spence by stoppage is even money, Take that bet. Understand <laughs> Understand how ridiculous that bet is. Fedora just went the distance with Tim Zhu, folks. Right? Uh, Fedora beat Lubin. Fedora, if you look at the record, you're going to see several guys. Ocampo with winning records. These are tough guys who Fedora has been in the ring with and has beaten. 
right? I'm telling you the championship mindset. Fandora is going to feel that Errol Spence, in addition to being an old man, because isn't that what every 26-year-old thinks about a 34-year-old, right? But Fandora is also going to think, this brother's not even a vet in this division, right? <laughs> What's this welterweight doing up here at 154? Right? Haven't I already fought real guys at 154? What's, what's this guy doing, thinking that he deserves to fight me, the champion? You know where I stand on this. Fandora simply to win, plus 175. I'm locking that in. As soon as they release the prop on, you know, Spence by KO, I'm going to jump on that. Right, let's go one step further. Either guy can get the KO here. Are you sure Spence is still Spence? He just got stopped in a fight he was dropped multiple times by Terrence Crawford. Right, if you have doubts about whether Spence is still Spence, depending on the price, you might simply want to take the prop that the fight doesn't go the distance. Because quite frankly, Spence needs a knockout to win. You already collect if Fundora wins by decision. Right? Why not double dip? If you now are able to get a reasonable price on the fight not going the distance. In other words, you're locking in a plus 175. You need for the odds to be on the fight not going the distance. A minus 150 or lower. Right? If you could lock that in, you could win on both halves of the play if Fundora, who has a lot of knockouts, knocks out Spence. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. Understand, too, because Fundora is high volume, if Spence looks like an old man, if Spence looks like De La Hoya looked against Manny Pacquiao, if he's getting a lot of shots rained on him, can't match the volume, and it's clear by the eighth round he has no chance of winning the fight, just to save face, his corner might throw in the towel. Food for thought. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.